Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Unmute yourselves if you haven't already, just to say hello to everybody. We have a few folks in the church, so shout out a hello. Hello. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. 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 Good morning, everybody. Hey, Margaret. Hi. <laughs> All right, we're going to jump right in this morning. We're going to start with any announcements for the life of the church. And I know that Tony DeLuca asked me to just share at least one thing quickly with you, which is that he highly recommends on the CW channel a documentary about Silent Night, oh. um, a song for the world. He mentioned mm. it on Friday night, but they're going to be streaming again on December 23rd. If he, if we could have um, had the rights to stream it, he was going to send it to all of you as a Christmas card from the church because he thinks it's such a great documentary about the power of music across the centuries in a season like this. Um, right now, CW is is has it and, and is sharing it with people. So if you can tune into it we welcome you to do so maybe next year we'll be able to share it with you ourselves we hope so but um for now it's a recommendation if you're able to view it other announcements for the life of the church unmute yourself if you have one and don't wait for me to see you just jump in sit in your arm the um the net gators go ahead i was just jeanette was going was our model right Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, we have net gators, and there are a few people that have got them. They're holding them up if they've got them. They're in the front of the church. This is a, um, you know, a by donation. If you want to have one, you're welcome to have one. Um, a few people are holding them up. Yeah, it, um, it, it's we we designed it and printed it for the church. So new to you guys, woohoo! <laughs> um. All right, other announcements for the life of the church. Before, we're gonna be sending out an email that tells you the schedule for the whole week, but the highlights for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, just so that we make sure to share that with everybody. Weather permitting and cooperating at five o'clock on Christmas Eve, we will do an in-person candlelight walk. We'll have a few stations and there will be a couple of singers that will carol to you. You can hum along, you can't sing, but you can hum along. And it will end in front of the nativity trees. Um, we will have live you know, candles, the same candles that we would normally have in a candlelight service we'll do outside. This will be masked, socially distanced, and weather permitting. Um, we're not gonna push it very hard outside of the church. I mean, anybody's welcome, but we're not gonna put up posters or anything, just we, we wanna make sure we control numbers. And we're fairly sure that um, a people are really looking for something for Christmas Eve. But at 9 o'clock, we're going to have a Zoom-only worship service. That's 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time for you out-of-staters that are at, um, attending from all the other parts of the world. Um, and that will feature all of the songs prepared by the choir for the season in one evening, plus many carols. And we will be reading Luke 1 and 2 the nativity story. And it's really going to be um, the lessons of the scripture, the carols and the candles will tell us the story. And we will be lighting the uh, candles that evening as well. This morning, our candle lighters are the White family and we're very happy to have you all here and we thank you for, for coming and joining us. And I believe those are the big announcements. Um, and also just remember there is a double planet going on right now right and so for the next two days tomorrow is the height of it at the solstice the planets are going to be very visible especially um Lori kinsey was saying about 45 minutes after sunset um to the right of the moon so if you find the moon in the sky and you look down and to the right you should be able to see the two stars but you can see them tonight too as well assuming that the skies are clear so well worth watching and focusing a little bit on the solstice tomorrow too. So, uh, and if you if you don't see it this year, you won't see it till 2080. So a lot of us won't see it. So this is it. Go check it out. 
All right. I think that's all the imaginary, the things I can imagine telling you right now. I'm sure I forgot something. You guys will remind me later. Let us begin by listening to a piano piece by the Roberts family as our centering music to be followed by lighting candles with the whites. So just um, plant your feet firmly on the floor, close your eyes, or just grow still and listen. That was great. <laughs> These are sharing music with us. So we're incorporating them all throughout the service. So that, and for the people that couldn't see that, there was two boys playing a duet together at their home piano. So they're playing on and on for eight. It was pretty great to watch. And now uh, we invite you all, I think everybody has a copy of the responsive reading. We'll put the words up for you in Zoom, but for those that are in here in the sanctuary, the whites will lead us. We are the people. So we read the part that says people and they read the part that says one. And please unmute okay. yourselves. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, can you hear us? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, in our cherished stories, holy love is born in our messy, amazing world. Then if we imagine ourselves as part of the story and remember we are de definitely part of a story that is still unfolding even now. That holy love is offered to us, wrapped up to be kept warm and safe in the form of a human and even a whole world that love is placed into our arms, into our care and keeping. Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. minute. What will we do, what will we do with, this, with love this love that has been entrusted, been entrusted to us? To us? <clears throat> Maybe we don't feel ready to accept this gift. Did we ask for it? Did we want it? We ask ourselves, ask ourselves what, what does, does holy love, love, love want from us? Expect from, 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 from us. And yet, when we look into the face of that holy love, we can't turn away. What we see is the places and people we love most in the world, each other, Someone or some place we recognize and can't push away. Someone who needs us, oh, someone who needs us and wants us, someone whose connection to us will motivate us, move us to do almost anything, even things we didn't imagine we could do or realize we ought to do, but we'll do them. Yes. 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 Okay. 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 We gather, we gather up that presence, that presence and place it next, and to, place our it next to our hearts. Our hearts. Welcome, the Welcome the connection. connection. Willingly bear Willing the weight and the responsibility of holding love, 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 love close. close. Then we then pause, we pause again, again and wonder, and wonder what, what, comes what comes next? What comes next? What comes next? Hope, peace, joy, and love. Light the way, Light the way from one Christmas, Christmas moment, moment to the next. 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 And help, help us stay, us stay tuned, in tuned in and touch by the story. Yes, yes. 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 This is the story. The story we are telling this season. The one that we are, the telling, one that we are telling in our own daily living and loving. This morning, this morning, may the glow of love guide us. And now the whites are going to light their candles. And if you have not already lit all of your candles, we're going for the final fourth purple candle. And then on Christmas Eve, we will be adding the Christ candle, which is the white one in the middle. So I'm just gonna do this for the church now. Thank you, whites. Thank you. And thanks to everybody that unmuted and uh, participated in the different ways that you have been present. Just gonna make sure the poinsettia doesn't burn. That'd be bad. I think we're, uh, yeah, Alan's keeping an eye on it. You guys can feel free to keep an eye on it. 
All right. So we're now going to enter a time of prayer. And we begin with concerns. There are several that have been shared with the community for to, to be raised up. And so I'm going to give you those concerns first this morning, and then we're going to ask you to add your own. And then uh, we'll move to celebration because we're going to need the celebration because our prayers are heavy. We're going to start with three, um, Jim Hastings' mom, as we know, passed over a week ago. Three other parents, uh, one grandfather and two grandmothers have passed this week. The father of Erica Corbett Klein and her children and her husband died yesterday. His name is Gordon Corbett. He was with his daughter and in hospice with um, Erica as well there. His name is Gordon. His wife is Ruth. So we hold up with gratitude his long life that brought his children and his grandchildren into this world and created a family. We also mark the life of Sima, who is from Nepal and is my um, son-in-law's grandmother. And she was his second mother when his parents moved here. They had to leave their children behind for six years and Sima raised him. And he hasn't seen her since he moved here. And they hoped to go back and COVID stopped that. And so um, people connected by Zoom and FaceTime, but Sima has left the great legacy of grandchildren, daughters, and son. And um, she, her, her rights were celebrated this week. She was, um, her body was burned on a pyre in the Nepali way, and then her ashes were spread in the river there, and her family observed it, and they are now in mourning. So we give thanks for the life of Sima. And we give thanks for the life of Sasha Black's mother-in-law, former mother-in-law. Her name was Jerry, and she was also a grandmother, much beloved of Sasha's sons and daughters and grandchildren. So for her life, too, we give thanks. We have some requests for prayers for people that have new diagnoses. Richard and Sandra Himmelwright are now living with Richard's newly diagnosed stage four lung cancer. Sasha Black has been diagnosed with colon cancer and some other complications. These are difficult beginnings of a journey and some of them, we don't know exactly where that journey is going. And so we ask for love's healing presence Perhaps it will be a presence that knits bodies back together and restores fullness of being, but perhaps that love comes as comfort and as dignity and the simple witness and presence of those who love you for the journeys that we're taking. We know that there are many, many other members of our community, some who have disclosed their journeys and some who have not shared their journeys with us who are also living with cancer in different parts of that journey, new diagnoses, undergoing forms of treatment, radiation or surgery or chemotherapy or uh, immunotherapy and other forms of response. And some who are hopeful and living with the what comes next part and praying for stability. And some who have said goodbye and there are many of us who have said goodbye of our loved ones. We know that there are also additional challenges happening for people, that we have people living with partners or, or other figures in their lives who have Alzheimer's or memory loss, um, who have lost independence and are living in assisted living or other forms of care communities, partners or, or family members who are helping care for their loved ones through many forms of, of illness. And we can't even name them all, but we lift up 
and we will lift up after you all have shared any prayers that you want to add, the parts of the body, because when we name the parts of the body, there are people who are listening who haven't said their specific journey out loud to us, but when we pray for those parts of our body, and when we say body, we may mean our physical body, but we also mean the body of Christ that is all of us together in community. Um, so now, if there are other prayers, I know I, I've given you a really difficult list, but um, these all just really came in this week, and we are here to help each other and lift the light for each other. Do you have other prayers that you wish to add? Please unmute yourselves and go ahead if you do. So we'll say a prayer for the body and then we're going to move towards celebration because what gets us through is the light. Um, darkness has gifts. Light has gifts. We embrace the both and of these conditions and places of being. But let's pray for the body. Oh, holy God, we pray for this body, your body, the people that loved you and watched your life broken open for justice and love and compassion to flow into the world and how that story is embodied in each of us and we become the living body of love itself for each other. And so we pray for the whole body, our whole community, our whole world. And we pray for the particular bodies. And we begin with the brain and the activity in the brain and the way the brain is sometimes wonderful and sometimes challenged by mental health, by things ranging from Alzheimer to epilepsy from memory conditions to so many other forms of challenge like depression. We pray for the spine and the nerves that run through the spine and for all the bones of our body, for our joints and our muscles and our tendons, for the flesh that encompasses all of us. And we pray for our eyes and our ears and our mouth and our nose. We pray for our heart and our lungs. And we pray for our lymphatic system and our spleen and our kidneys and our livers, for our colons and our GI tracts, for all the parts of the body that we can't even imagine that we should name right now, but someone is living with a challenge with these parts of the body. And so we lift up our particular body and our communal body, and we place it into the care of holy love. But we place ourselves also into each other's keeping, and we ask that love to give us the strength to be light and love, tangible, muscular, gritty, determined, stubborn love, for each other. And now we move to celebration. And the first celebration is that Doc Gilmore, who went through his heart surgery last week, has come out of it quite successfully. And they hope he'll be home in a day or two. And so for every step that leads us towards a form of healing or homecoming and possibly a change in perspective, we give thanks. Do you have forms of celebration that you wish to raise up today? Because we could sure use your celebration. If you do, please unmute. I have one back here, so you go ahead. Ptarmigans were crossing the road in front of Sue Kerrigan, so she had to cross. She had to stop her car to let the ptarmigans go. <laughs> I'm impressed you even knew ptarmigans. Alan has one. Ah, so Alan, Alan's so thankful and grateful that members of the Mount, um, Our Lady of the Mountains are going to join the Jackson Choir. So these new traditions that we are sharing with each other, we've been connecting with our mountain Jewish community um, through Havara um, for Hanukkah. 
and uh, different churches are cooperating in different ways. So Zoom gets us, gives us a chance to share with each other. So gratitude. Um, anybody else want to unmute? Go for yeah. it. Don't wait for me to see I'm, you. Just do it. Go. Um, this is Meg. I'm grateful for the beautiful day we had yesterday so that families of the nursing home residents at Mineral Springs um, could participate in a kind of a crazy, funky parade in our cars <laughs> around the building. And there were people walking St. Bernard's, some of us wearing Santa hats and waving mm -hmm. and lighting up the cars and trucks and with wreaths and bells and things um, to give some enjoyment of this very strange season to residents who may not have been outdoors in the last 10 months. So um, it was, I'm very grateful that we had the opportunity to do that and people enjoyed it. That is wonderful and creative. Thank you for sharing that, Meg. Go ahead and unmute if you wanna share. I have a joy. Um, last week I asked you for prayers for Emily, our dog, Great Pyrenees, who wasn't doing very well. Um, her back legs are still kind of swollen, but it's due to a tumor that she has, but we've got her back on a regimen of chemo and we're hoping that that's gonna help with that swelling eventually, but she seems to be doing a lot better, eating better and moving around better. So that's been a joy for us to see her improve. So thank you all for your prayers. And Jennifer, thanks for reminding us, uh, you know, as we say, the importance of um, pets and animals in our life. There are a lot of us that recognize that because we live it. Anybody else want to share? Go ahead and unmute if you do. Well, I'm just going to lift up the uh, bird count. Um, Lori Kinsey reminded us that there was a bird count yesterday, and it was a beautiful day, and people were out like on skis and in their bird feeders, but just looking for birds. I mean, Sue saw the ptarmigans. People were counting all kinds of birds yesterday. Reminder to be connected to the, the natural world around us. Let us lift up celebration now in prayer. Well, holy God. We simply say thank you. Today is the day that we light the candle of love and that flame burns in us. And we need, uh, we need music, we need laughter, we need each other in any way we can find each other. And so we are grateful for these chances to gather and remember and connect and celebrate and know that there is both love and light present even when we can't feel it we give thanks and now we say the words that you first taught us together praying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I don't know if you guys know this, but I have to keep a running script because there's a lot of details to these services, so I'm make sure I don't forget anything. We are now going to um, sing a carol together. We're going to sing, O Come All Ye Faithful. Bad news for the people that are in the sanctuary. You can hum. You can't sing. Sorry. It's not safe to sing together. But everybody else, you can mute yourselves at home and you can sing and we will have the words and a person leading us underneath. So you'll be able to hear the song and you can hum along if you're in Zoom and at home, you can sing. Let's go for it. Oh, come all you faithful.
ask. I'm like a bandit, except now you know who I am. Now we're going to read scripture. We will be reading Isaiah 11 and Luke 2. Today we're really going to tell much of the nativity story. And you can follow along with the words, which will be up on the screen, or here you can just listen as we read. Isaiah 11. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness, righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. And from Luke 2. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. So ends the reading. And now before we dive into the message this morning, um, Austin Roberts recorded Silent Night on piano for us. So we're going to listen to Silent Night.
and applaud that I was it's worth applauding I like the I like the uh, grin on the at the end of the video it's very cute. <laughs> um, please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So this is the fourth week of Advent. And it's just a few days from Christmas. And I think in the way that our prayers really show, we are in dire need of love. And love as a muscular, feisty, stubborn presence in our lives right now. Uh, Because it's easy to be overwhelmed by the hard parts of what's happening in our world. And it's been a long, long year. And it can feel like no year has ever been as hard as this one, although we know in human history that we have endured more or as much. And we have been resilient in those times as we are resilient now. The kind of love that we light the candle for. And and there are many kinds of love, right? There's eros, you know, there's the falling in love and dating somebody and having passionate young love. And there's long-standing love, and there's filios, friendship love, and there is, I mean, there's all kinds, all kinds of love, but the love that we light this candle for is agape, and it is something more than other kinds of love. It is the kind of love that all other loves are a part of and mirror, but it is eternal, and it is strong, and it is bigger than anything you can imagine. And it's something that we long to be connected to. And probably the thing that gives us a second wind when we need it and strength when we didn't think we had strength within us. And when we are able to be loved for each other, we are reflecting that greater love. But this morning, trying to put your hands on agape and what agape really means and then thinking about these two readings, there's, there's the Isaiah reading where a prophet is talking to an entire community and trying to help them think about justice in their times and also hope when justice seems unavailable. And there's this promise that love will come, that out of the stump of Jesse, a root and a shoot will rise up and hope will be born again. And In our tradition, we read the Isaiah prophecy, the the storytellers of the nativity, and they took it and they reframed words that were being spoken to the Hebrew people, the the nation of Israel in a, a thousand years before, and they hear their own story reflected because they are also in a time of oppression, and they can't imagine that times could get any worse. And the story of Isaiah, the words of Isaiah, making meaning of the life and the ministry of a man that they're following, who's overturning expectations and fomenting a kind of a revolution under Roman leadership, become important. And now 2,000 years later, we're still telling that story and we're still looking for how we make sense out of love and hope, and words. And what I want to say is that out of that entire Luke story, if I'm trying to find the love in there, I think about the single line, and Mary took these words, and she pondered them, and she treasured them in her heart. A mother, and we are mourning mothers today, and mourning fathers today, At 8 o'clock, we read a beautiful poem by Maya Angelou called Love Liberates, and it is an ode to her mother. And the power of a mother to launch a child completely into independence of life, and for that daughter later in life to restore that gift to her mother, because in her mother's dying, she was able to be with her mother and help her mother pass out of this world by loving her and letting her go, but giving her dignity along the way. 
And so if we want to touch agape, and we can't really touch it, but if we want to get as close to agape as we can, sometimes when we have known the love of a parent or a teacher or one mentor or a sibling or a friend who made a difference in our lives and helped shape us, at its best, that kind of of stubborn love that sticks with us when we get everything wrong, when we walk away and that love stays and says, you can come home again as many times as you need to and I will be here and you can make mistakes and I will love you. Your life is worth everything and I will be here to love you through everything. We are beginning to touch agape. And for us, sometimes agape shows up also as community. And I think of these two, like the story that Meg just told us this morning about a parade going around the nursing home. There are people that we can't even touch right now because of COVID or other circumstances. They're in another part of the country or another part of the world, or they're just in the next room, but they have to quarantine or they're in a place like the nursing home. And to keep the patients and the staff safe, guests can't come and go. And so people walk their St. Bernard's and they drive their cars and they honk and they ring bells and they sing carols and people get outside and we make an extra effort and we connect each other. The Whitney Community Center has been delivering baskets through the holidays to connect a community that often feels very isolated and to remind people you're not as alone as you might think you are. And the Parent Teacher Association and the Whitney Board decided to do an in-kind donation um, drive for the way station. And for anybody that doesn't yet know what the way station is, in the Valley, um, about a year and a half ago, a few volunteers, and it includes people from this church, started an organization that's a day resource center for the homeless and the housing insecure. It's not a shelter, but it provides a lot of the resources that people need, including laundry, hot showers, access to emergency food, clothing, camping gear, because sometimes the only solution right now is a hot is a warm sleeping bag in your car because we have people living in their cars, we have people living in tents in the woods, people that are couch surfing, and people that are living in hotels with much support. Um, the biggest request we were getting was for warm clothing. And so in the e-news and in emails out to the community through the school, they put out an appeal for sleeping bags, camping gear, and warm winter clothing. Well, anybody that's ever been in our little church, there's a coat closet in the front of the church. And the church is open 24-7, so you can always come in here and look at the nativity scenes or get yourself a neck gaiter or borrow a book or whatever. People have been coming in here and leaving bags of donated goods. We filled up the room twice already. It, the pile yesterday was almost as tall as me, and I found out that a bunch of those um, donation, a bunch of donations had already been removed from that room and loaded into one person's car. We carried a bunch out to the back, and now the, there are more donations coming. We're gonna, probably going to slow down the drive because now we have to have space for all of those belongings at the waste station. But to me, a closet that gets filled up two or three times is agape. It's, a, it's as real as agape gets. Agape is love when you are cold, uh, a phone that will be answered when you are desperate for shelter or hope of some way of connecting. Agape is the skill of a surgeon that changes your heart valve like they did for Doc. And sometimes agape is a son or a daughter or a spouse or a friend that bears witness to your life, both in your living and in your passing. Agape is showing up for each other because we as humans, that's how we embody love. We show up for each other. 
So today, know that you are the light of love, that the flame of hope and love resides in you. And when you feel that flame going out, remember, the flame comes from a spark that is bigger than you. You don't have to do it by yourself. And if you're not sure how to connect, count the birds, walk in the mountains, turn to a friend, reach out and help someone else and know that love is bigger than you. But love is as big as you. And you are enough and more than enough. And together we are all that we need. We give thanks for the flame of love and the reminder of what love can do and be for us in these times. Thanks be to God. To capture the spirit of this love, the choir prepared a song called Glow. So I invite you now to listen to Glow. And so, friends, um, this is just a time when we remember to give. And so we're going to play yet. I'm, I'm going to play another song by um, Alan Roberts. Not I'm going to. My, my husband, who's in the background doing all this production for us, is going to play a song prepared for us by Alan Roberts. And during this song, um, we ask that you will prepare or make any offering that you are doing for our community, um, jxncc.org or anything in the basket, or if you have to get up at home and go do something, or just listen to this offering that is given back to you.
possible to hear that? No, can't see it or hear it. Every, I, okay, Meg, I think that's on your end because everybody really? looks like. Okay, okay. Yeah, I was able to hear it and see it. It was lovely. Okay. Yes, very nice. All right. Well, it, if you missed it, it'll be part of the recording that's out on Facebook too. And we posted. So there's a chance to revisit the whole thing. Yay. <laughs> We're going to sing a song now. We're going to hope you can hear and see, see the carol. Um, we're going to do Away in the Manger. We're going to do that the same way we did the other one. And then we're going to do the benediction. So um, mute yourselves if you're at home. Hum if you're here. Words on the screen. Away in the Manger followed by the benediction. You guys hear me? Yeah. Now the benediction and then Alan will play us out. And then anybody that wants to stick around, there's like this little people stay in Zoom and say hi to each other. So I can spin the computer and you guys can say hi too. But benediction, Alan, then chat. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. 